Welcome to Yvonne Michelle's exclusive R Retreat, happening on Saturday the 30th of October 2021, located at the Holiday Inn Hotel, Kensington High Street, London. Now you may be single and you may want to meet the person of your dreams. You may even be in a relationship and want to add some spice, improve your communication skills within your partnership. Well, this retreat has been specifically designed to help you improve your relationship and personal development status and empower you to rebuild a healthy, more vibrant relationship with yourself and others. So with a choice of a one day package or an overnight stay, you will have full use of the hotel spa facilities and have an amazing experience. So book today, do not delay. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another episode of After Dark Talk. Now, we have started a little bit differently tonight. We've had a few technical hitches, but we are here. We are here, and we are ready for the show. So are you ready? Now, as you start to come in, I just want to welcome those of you who are on Facebook, those of you who are on YouTube, and those of you who are meeting at Live TV, I'm going to say welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's show. Now, we have had a massive run of different speakers coming in every week, giving you a glimpse, an insight into what they are going to be doing at uh, our, our retreat at the end of the month. And as you saw the advert just then, you know, the time is getting closer and closer. So let me just say this, there are limited tickets left. So if you are interested in getting a ticket and you're interested in learning more about your personal development, learning more about relationships, how you how you respond to yourself, how you respond to others. And if you want to make your life even better, then I would say to you, do make sure that you book. Don't leave it to the last minute because you may not get that ticket at the last minute. It's limited seating. And I'm saying that for real. Um, it is a limited seating. So how have you been? How's everything going with you? How has it been for you? So last week we had Sharon Calix on the show and we talked about being safe online and she gave some really, really, really good tips. And this week, we have another amazing young woman, beautiful soul, uh, in the studio today. And we also have our other speakers coming on a little bit later on in the show, so stay tuned for that. Um, but I do have an amazing young lady uh, who I met, it was just before the pandemic, and we actually met in person. We were speaking at the same event. Um, and she is here with me tonight. I'm so excited. When she came to the door, I was like, hello. And she was like, hello. And we hugged, and it was really, really lovely. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce my wonderful guest for tonight, and that is Astrid Phillips. How are you, my darling? I'm good, thank you. It's great to see you. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Thank you. And so good to see you in person again. Yeah. You know, we've seen each other online over the, over yeah, the pandemic. We have. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, but it's so good to see you in person. So before we get into the, into the, into the stuff, mm -hmm. you know, the pandemic hit. Yeah. We, we met at an event. Yeah. Um, at a beautiful location. Oh. Amazing. It was lovely. So we were both speaking. Yes. And then um, the pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. And then what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> we carried on communicating. Yes, we did. We, we helped each other we out. Did. It was good. <laughs> yes, we did. We got online and we oh, started to do yeah. our thing and help others 
to really yeah. navigate because the pandemic was a really really difficult time yes, for most of us yeah. really if we were honest yes. yeah. and so you were online doing your meditation yeah. and mindfulness yeah. yes so that would and then i was doing my morning inspiration so before morning inspiration i'd try and get myself together <laughs> to get into this mode of relaxation mm -hmm. and meditate so that i could bring forth yeah. you know the word in which i was doing for the day so it was it was like a win-win yes and yes. so this has now come up. I'm doing this retreat. And I thought to myself, who would be really good for this <laughs> retreat? Who? And I was thinking, because I wanted mindfulness, I wanted meditation, I wanted that kind of, mm. you know, to, to de stress, really. Because mm -hmm. most people's mm -hmm. complaints is how stressed they stressed feel. Stressed they are. That's right. Yes. And so yes. Thought, yes. And then your face just appeared to me, and I'm like, that's the person. <laughs> and so we communicated. Yeah, and you are definitely. on the retreat. And I'm yeah. really, really excited that you're part Good. of this journey. Really, Good. really. So, Astrid, tell tell our viewers, mm -hmm. uh, I know that some of them may know you already. Yes. Uh, yes. But tell our viewers who you are, what you do, and then we're going to go into the mindful and meditation mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. So, I'm Astrid, and I, um, I do mindful meditation. And it purely came about um, from... I'll tell you a little bit about my story in a minute, but it purely came about from um, about 20, between 2000 and 2006 was when I really started. That's when the little, had the little penny drop at that right. time. Ooh. So it was back then. Um, and so ever since, and especially for the pandemic, it was very much a case of, um, really thinking about well how can I help others how can I serve others because I'm somebody who's very comfortable with myself being in my own space and I don't have a challenge with that and in actual fact I did enjoy it sounds really crazy but I did enjoy the pandemic because I was on my own and I was able to focus not be interrupted and just do what I wanted to do and actually I was still productive during the pandemic because during the pandemic i ended up co-authoring a book wow um uh, stories of truth and triumph and the proceeds for that go to a charity for young people um for those who are having mental health challenges and those who have suicidal thoughts mm. is available can i say <laughs> yeah, can. which is available on amazon <laughs> so it is it is on there but all the money raised and actually there was a second book out as well now same title um and again it's it's all stories from um a plethora of different people who've had who've gone through struggles and without giving away too much my story's in there about what actually got everything started for me um and it was very much a case of i had a traumatic experience in my life and it took me about six years to deal with it and i i spent a lot of that time um in depression and one of the things i learned to do that's where i learned to be by myself and be comfortable with myself um and a lot of people were like that's a long time no it's not it's what you want to do and how you want to deal with the situation it's as long as it takes so long as you're not wallowing in that situation you're taking steps to actually eventually come out of that situation but whilst you're in it it's difficult to do and here's where i learned about just about mindfulness about what is it what does it do mm. what are the benefits um, and so from that point of view, I started, you know, a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, until it grew. And then it really came to the fore, more so during the pandemic, but it came to the fore towards the end of those six years. Um, and I won't tell you the whole story. You'll have to come on the retreat and I'll tell you the whole story then. <laughs> but um, what I'm going to say to you is mindfulness meditation is the best thing I've learned about. And as much as people say, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure, and all of that kind of thing, and they think it's all woo-woo and all of that kind of stuff, actually, if you take the time to learn about it, what it is, and the benefits that can be gained from that, 
um, then you'll be surprised how much it will benefit you. Um, so can I just ask you, Astrid, what, what is mindfulness? Just for those who don't know, mm -hmm. um, what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is about being in the moment. And it's about literally just being aware of your surroundings and what is there. Not speaking, not being judgmental, just taking in what is there. And the meditation bit with the mindfulness then helps you to rethink for yourself without being judgmental in a calm way and focusing <clears throat> on de-stressing yourself in fact um, and, and learning how to do that because it's not an easy thing to do because I remember because I am actually qualified to teach mindfulness and I remember when I first learned it I'm a very active person um, and I teach a lot of um, exercise classes. So if you're on my Facebook, you'll see me posting constantly about the class I've just done and that kind of thing. But it was funny enough, my boss, he said to me, come and do mindfulness. And I thought, what? <laughs> me? I can't keep still for five minutes. No mind going to do mindfulness. But I went along with it. And the first kind of three hours I couldn't keep still <laughs> I was trying I was really trying but after that time what she was then doing was actually appealed to me it you can do mindfulness movement mm -hmm. and that for me was like actually yeah I, I, I so you, that. you found your yeah, your I niche, found my little niche yeah, yeah. Mindfulness, so it was mindfulness movement, movement. So for those of you that maybe do yoga, Tai Chi, that kind of thing, that is mindfulness movement. Okay. So you can do it that way or you can do it. There's a number of different ways in which you can do it. So but. it's kind of, it's a more slower movement. Yes. More it's defined. about slowing down. Slowing down, yeah. right. So part of, part, part of the mindfulness meditation um, that I was doing online, because I did that during the pandemic, mm. is I got people to really think about their breathing. And to, you know, even close their eyes and just take a nice deep breath in and then breathe out again without thinking about anything else and clearing their mind. And you find when you did the minute you close your eyes and you just focus on your breathing, everything else falls away. Mm. You just have to give yourself mm. time because the, the mind is constantly yes. going different yes. things, different, yes. you know, scenarios, things that have been said, things that haven't been said, things that you've done, things that you need to do. The mind is constantly, constantly going, going all on the go. Yes. So yes. in that breath work, mm -hmm. that is, is that what actually slows, slows you down? Yes. Right. And so yes. once you, you yes. take the, that step and the breath starts to slow you down, mm -hmm. then what happens because sometimes mm -hmm. like if i before i started doing your meditations um in the mornings i would find that my mind because my mind is just like it's just like that. it's always on the go so mm -hmm. and like everybody else as i assume but it just feels like it never stops and sometimes when i take do the breath work and it's just like at a point of where Something should happen. It's like my mind's like, <laughs> yeah. and then I'm exactly. like, no, 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 no. And here's where I say the best time to do mindfulness meditation is first thing in the morning, right? And in the first kind of twenty minutes, that's when your mind is just waking up, mm -hmm. and that is the best time to actually absorb and to actually maintain that calmness mm. by doing the breathing, doing the breath work. And literally just clearing your mind of everything. Wow. Okay. And it makes such a difference because from after that 20 minutes, mm. our mind is on the go. Right. So, you know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you feel a like a little bit tired, a little bit lethargic and what mm -hmm. have you. That's just your brain trying to wake yourself up. Right. And what we do, cortisol is what helps to wake us up, which is like a, a stress hormone. Mm -hmm. So by doing that first thing in the morning... What it does is it just calms you back down again right. because it brings the stress down right again. Down. Okay. And so because you're breathing, because you have your eyes closed, because you are just 
taking it easy, mm -hmm. then that's what helps for the rest of the day. And if you can get in the habit of doing that every single morning mm. before you do anything else, you'd be surprised the difference it makes to you. To your, and to your day, really. To your day as well. Wow, 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 well. wow. So, yes. Okay, so I just want to welcome everyone that's coming in, coming, 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 coming. We started a little bit later than normal. Um, just want to say good evening to everybody who's on Facebook, those of you who are on YouTube and those on Media Net Live TV. I welcome you. We are talking about mindfulness. Yes. Have Astrid here, <laughs> Coach Astrid, as, I, as it's all over your advertising. I know, right? Yeah. Coach Astrid. Yes. yes. And we're yes. talking about mindfulness. Now, Kieran, we've got Kieran Richards. Kieran is a good friend of the show. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kieran. Thank you for being here. Let's see. He says, I agree. Mindfulness and somatic processing can really help to assess bodily emotions that need to be processed. This can really help shift emotional experiences, even with trauma, trauma. clients. Yes. Fantastic. Good evening, Sheena Campbell, and good evening, Michelle. Mich Mich Anne. How are you? Hey, um, Annie Mac, how are you doing? Thank you for being here this evening. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want if you have any questions about mindfulness, or meditation, please put it in the chat, yeah? Because we have our expert here, so we're going to be asking her all <laughs> the questions in preparation Yes, for the retreat for as the well. Retreat, yes. So, yes. guys, I yes. want you to get to know Astrid, um, as she is going to be with us on the retreat, doing all the meditation. I can't yes. wait for it. I know. It's going to be great. Right. It's going to be it's lovely. Be so when you get into London and you get into the hotel, those of you who are traveling on the day, Astrid will be there and just mm. bring you to the zone. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oh, it's going to be great. Yes. It is. It it's is. It's going to be great. It is. It really it is. is. So we're talking about mindfulness mm -hmm. and first thing in the morning. Yes. So... For instance, like for me, when I wake up in the morning, it's it's almost like as soon as my eyes open, open. my brain is just like this, 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 this. Yeah. and I go like this. Stop. Yeah. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And then I take a moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then I just have a moment with myself. Yes. And I'm like, and as much as the brain is like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying it's almost like it has its own mind yes the mind has its own mind where it wants to just this is what you need to do and mm -hmm. i'm saying to my mind hold on a minute mm -mm. i need to just mm -hmm. i need to just have a moment for me yes because yes. i need to be able to give to me first, first. But you can't give to yourself and you can't look after yourself you can't look after anybody That's else right so I will try and I will do it. As you know, I've I've done your your meditations and mm -hmm. it's it's nicer when there's someone to guide you. Guide you, yes. It yes, absolutely yes, is yes. because it kind of keeps the brain mm -hmm. in check. Mm -hmm. So I'm mm -hmm. finding that I have to talk to myself mm -hmm. like I'm you. Yeah, yeah. And like, no, this is we're not doing that. We're doing this. <laughs> yeah. But how can how can I do that quicker? Is there any way that I can make that it's, more it's spontaneous? Not, it's not necessarily about quicker because it's about kind of slowing down to spend time with you mm. and being comfortable with spending time with you because a lot of people feel that oh if I'm spending time with myself I'm not spending it on somebody and you start feeling guilty and you start this and that da, 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 and that's not going to help and it's about disciplining yourself so I will set my alarm half an hour early in the morning mm -hmm. um and I, I have my phone at the other end of the bed okay so that I have to get up get my phone to switch off the alarm Right. And then that's kind of my, okay, mindfulness now. Right, okay. And so that's kind of what jolts me into doing that. And then once I start, I'm just like, oh. And it's, it's because I've been doing it for so long now, mm. it's, it's just so relaxing. And especially when, like you say, your brain is doing 10 to the dozen. Yeah. And you know you've got a, a, a potentially a, a stressful day. Mm. Just to stay calm. It's mm. like I, I I I was having having a meeting this morning, and I know you know different personalities will will work in different ways. And I thought, you know what? No, calm. Do my meditation. Mm -hmm. Then I walked in walked into to walk to the meeting, sat down, and I'm just like, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And 
because I did that, I just went with the flow because that's part of it. It's it's part of a, um, mindfulness is about dealing with what's happening in the moment, but also learning how to let go and go with the flow. Oh wow! And not be triggered yeah. by what people do, say, react, Ooh. behave, and that kind of thing. Oh, this is going to be so good. This, <laughs> this, this is going to be so good, guys. Because as you said, the letting go, because we have Daniel. I don't know if you've met Daniel. No. You're going to love Daniel. Okay. Daniel's been on the show a couple of times now. And his thing is all about letting go. Mm -hmm. So, and this is just showing me exactly where to put you. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good, then. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Because this is, you know, because the whole purpose of the retreat is to give back especially after mm. you know the, the pandemic that we've had mm -hmm. and it's to really give back to people to mm -hmm. help them mm -hmm. say right we've had a, a miserable time mm -hmm. but now you know and and sometimes it is letting go of the, the i'll tell you one thing that many people need to let go of and that's fear yes the fear of the pandemic yes because there's been so much yes um negativity mm -hmm. and you know all of these words these buzzwords that they've been throwing at they say and all these things like this and so many people have lost people yeah. there's a massive fear mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. um the covid19 epidemic as i call it mm -hmm. and so because of that mm -hmm. we now have this is one of the reasons why i see i asked this lady to come on <laughs> That's one of the reasons why. Because we want to gift back to you mm -hmm. and help you so that you can navigate your life mm -hmm. more effectively. And you mm -hmm. might feel, well, I'm fine. I'm all right. You might feel like that. But actually, when you hear things mm -hmm. about what's going on in the world, how do you really feel? Mm -hmm. What impact is it having on your heart? Mm -hmm. What impact is it having on your mind? Right. Yeah. And so these are the things mm -hmm. These are the tools, the techniques, the strategies mm -hmm. that Astrid is coming to teach. Yeah. You know, this is a workshop. It's not, she's not going to stand up and talk like that to you. She, we're doing mini workshops so that you actually get. Get a little bit of. Yeah, something out of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I was, because there's a couple of people I follow um, on Facebook. And one person um, actually was honest uh, yesterday and actually said that he was not dealing with things. He was on automatic pilot mm. and didn't really take time out for himself. And you could see he was doing a live, but you could, you could almost see the emotion in him. Wow. Um, and it's not like him at all. Okay. And you know that something's not quite right. When someone asks you a question, you suddenly have to go into a flood of tears yeah. because that is your body telling you something is not right. right yeah but someone's hit the nail on the head they triggered you and that's the reaction mm. or if somebody says something and your reaction is you suddenly stop mm. or you suddenly feel something like you were saying in your heart then you need to look after yourself mm. you know and and that's where mindfulness comes into play because you learn then how to deal with that Mm. And you, even if you don't do that 10 minutes in the morning, there are various different things you can do during the day. Like you were talking about your mirror. Oh, yes. And, you know, that comes into it not as deeply as you do, but mm. you can use that. How often, especially those who have children, their children are always around their legs and what have you, <laughs> go into the toilet, shut the door, look in the mirror. Absolutely. And do it so then. Do that, it, you know. it only takes, I mean, I can give you um, an app that I, I do use. Um, I can give you an app that I do use. And it's 10 minutes. Ten. What's 10 minutes out of 24 hours? Mm. It's nothing. So what is this app then? Tell us, tell us about the tell app. Tell me about the app. It's called Calm. Not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Calm. <laughs> now, if I tell you, I just before... Um, we had lockdown. Mm -hmm. I had had an opportunity to go to Bali. Okay. Nice. Had an opportunity to go to Bali. I know, right? It was amazing. Um, I was there, funny enough, for a retreat. Okay. Um, and I was the one English girl amongst a whole load of Australians. <laughs> okay. All right. So I was the only English girl, but that was fine. And the person who was organising that retreat put people together 
who maybe had something in common. Right. And I was put with a girl mm -hmm. who actually does mindfulness as well. Okay. Not only that, we found out through talking and sharing the room and all the rest of it, we had a friend in common. Oh, wow. And she lives in Australia. I live in England and I know her friend. Oh, wow. Where does the friend live? The friend, well, I didn't know where she lived, but she was a boss of mine. Oh. At the O2. I see. Isn't it a small world? I know. Tell me about it. Why would you go all the way to Bali to meet somebody? somebody who, yeah. It was meant to be. Yeah, definitely. It was meant to be. Um, and we used to do together, we used to do mindfulness every morning, mindfulness meditation. Mm -hmm. And straight from there, we'd go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And then straight from there, we'd start our day. We'd go Fantastic. and have, have a shower, have breakfast, do, 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 whatever. And this was at the retreat. This was at the retreat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how was Bali? We're going to come up. We're going to ask the question. <laughs> but how was Bali? Amazing. Mm. Amazing. And here's where you, you learn to have humility mm. because the people there they're grateful for everything okay and here's where the gratitude comes in as well mm. as part of the mindfulness because it allows you to think about all the things you have and when you go to somewhere like Bali where they have nothing mm. um and when I say nothing I mean you know people just do what they do to make money. Money, yeah, in terms of monetary. Because exactly. I mean, it's a beautiful place. It is a beautiful gorgeous place. place to live, yes. but they don't have the, the financial. They don't have um, the financial anything, but they're grateful for what they have. Mm. And, you know, when I hear people over here complaining about, mm, go live there. Mm. Go live there. Because one of the guys who I met there, um, he was actually going to live there. He okay. made a decision that he uh -huh. was going to live there. And he gave up all his worldly possessions and worldly goods, sold everything, and moved to Bali. Good and was going to live mm -hmm. like the Balians do. You said was going to. So he's not obviously not living. No, because he had to go back to Australia because of the <laughs> pandemic. Oh, oh sod's not. <laughs> sod's exactly. Not. <laughs> it's, so what he's doing now is he's finding places in Australia where he can live how he wants. Oh, okay. And he has truly taken embodied um, yoga, meditation. He's a Reiki healer. Um, and he's very much for uh, men mm -hmm. who are having a difficult time um, with regards to expressing themselves. Because, mm. you know, men don't really talk that much. They have to keep everything, go to their man cave and, mm -hmm. you know, keep themselves to themselves. But he's encouraging, he's encouraging them to actually talk like mm. women do we talk all the time we do. um yeah as encouraging them to talk and encouraging them to understand that having an emotional side mm. is not a negative no, it's, it's not. actually a positive it is and everybody has female and male in them oh yeah the energy is, yeah is the, the male and female is, energy is exactly. yeah it's both exactly, exactly okay so we've got a question from Kieran. He says, do you find that practicing mindfulness long term can help reduce the overactivation of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system in trauma clients? Yes, it can. Um, just purely from the point of view that a traumatic experience, you relive it over and over and over again in your mind. So therefore, you've you've made a pathway mm. um, where you just relive that. So it's a bit like, you know, walking through a field of grass. When you walk, you'll, you'll see that, that you'll trail see that line. you've yeah. left mm -hmm. and you keep walking that trail. Mm -hmm. um, however, mindfulness allows you to make another one. Right. And it helps you to maybe think about instead of going that way go that way so you can change direction you can change direction now a lot of people if we our mind is is a beautiful thing it's an absolutely amazing thing and 96 we we only use four percent of our brain mm. because 96 percent of our brain is on automatic pilot because if you think about everything that you do during the day it's automatic you don't have to think about it your brain does it for you mm. there's only maybe four percent where you have to think on your feet um, so you can imagine if 96% of your brain is constant and doing the same thing over and over again, you've made those trails and those pathways 
that you can't really get out of or it's difficult to get out of. Mm. So if you think about it like um, like you're learning a new language, what would you do? You would find, get all the relevant books, get all the relevant tapes, mm -hmm. you get all the information. Yes. You would then practice mm. consistently yeah. until you became confident mm -hmm. at doing it. Mm -hmm. It's no different to the brain. Okay. We've already got those pathways, but we need to look at ways of making new ones. Everybody's different. So everyone will have a different way of doing that. Mm -hmm. But it's about consistency and practice. Okay. And doing it for maybe five minutes or two weeks or whatever. Mm -mm. No, it's got to be continuous. It's got to be thing. continuous. And to actually create a habit, you need to do it for 66 days mm -hmm. without breaking the habit. Yeah. So if you break the habit, you start again. You start again. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm of that. I'm so, of yes. that ilk. You yes. Know, you break the habit, you start, start all again. over start again. again. Yes. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Kieran. Thank you for that uh, question. Um, it was a good question to ask. There was another question. Um, KB says, can you pray through meditation? Um. I would say yes, um, purely because your your meditation, you can design your own meditation. Mm -hmm. if, if, yeah, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it like that. You can design your own meditation that can be prayer based. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you, you can actually you can actually do that. Mm. Um, and again, if you practice it, it depends what your prayers are. Mm -hmm. But you can you can practice that. So if your prayers are around, you know, sort of improving yourself or improving um, your your interactions with other people mm -hmm. or that type of thing, then yes. Yeah. I mean, it's just creating new neural pathways. That's all it is. So to answer KB's question, because he says, can you pray through meditation? Because I know in terms of what the word, what the Bible says, and it says it's meditate on the word day and mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is your 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 answer, really. Yeah. It's it's the word you meditate on the the goodness of the word. You mm -hmm. know, I shall live and I shall not die. I shall. You know, I am the head and I am not the tail. But, yes. You know, that yes. kind of yes. that kind of thing, I would assume. And that you are blessed. Yes, and, and highly favoured. And highly favoured, yes. exactly. Yeah, exactly. so those are the types of and things. And believe it as yes. well. That's the big thing. It's all well and good saying these words. But you have to believe it. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't believe it, then nothing's mm. going to happen. You're wasting your breath. Exactly. So you exactly. believe it, feel it, to actually mm. take it on. Yes. To make that shift, really, yes. I think you've got to really embody. You, you, you've got to embrace it, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. And that's why, as I said, when I first started doing mindfulness, it was like, really? <laughs> and I, I eventually got to this, because like, it was a whole day training that I did. Mm -hmm. And I eventually got to the stage, okay, Astrid, this is you. Give it a chance and mm -hmm. see how you go with it. Right. And the minute she started doing the mindfulness movement, I'm like, this is me. This, right. is, this is my thing. Right. This is my thing. Because you... So, I, I, I'm acting. Yeah. I can't sit still. <laughs> See the hands? Um, I can't sit still for five minutes. Yeah. So, it's a case of I had to find something that would work for me. Yeah. Um, you know, and even now, I don't do the mindfulness movement anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I do kind of sit in a chair... And when I was doing the the live live early morning meditation, yeah, was very, I was it was very still, calming. Mm. I sat in the chair. I was talking about how to sit in the chair, and it sounds really silly, but at the end of the day, people, you know, if you sit correctly, you can focus yeah. on, you know, just clearing your mind, just focusing on, you know, what your heart is doing, what your tummy is doing. Mm you know, all of that kind of thing. What is, what, what your third eye? Yeah. So you're voice. starting to go into the chakras. Chakras, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it all, listen, everything it is aligned. Everything yeah. is aligned. So Kieran's saying, so mindfulness creates new, new neural mm. pathways. Yeah. Do you know any further research on this topic, please? I do, but guess what? You'll have to come on Saturday. <laughs> you have to come to the I'm region. giving it all away now. You have to come on Saturday. <laughs> there you go, Kieran. There is an open invitation for you to come. There I'm not sure go. where you're based, though. I'm not sure where he's based. Okay. Um, but yeah, um, you're nice to see you, Kieran. It would I've be. seen a lot of um, stuff that you've shared 
and it's been really really good so yeah, yeah absolutely it's absolutely and kb is saying good stuff thank you so keep the questions coming guys mm -hmm. keep the questions coming as i'm talking to coach astrid and we are talking about mindfulness Fullness, and yeah. meditation yeah mindfulness and meditation what well, uh, what i will be sharing and i won't go into too much detail now but what i will be sharing is our four levels of consciousness mm. um and when i kind of describe them all you'll kind of think yeah i know someone like that yeah i know someone like that yeah i know someone like that. <laughs> and it will all just come straight into mind right. but the the first level of, i'll share this bit the first level of consciousness is what i call the victim mode mm -hmm. and we all know people who want to blame everybody else for everything that goes on in their life and they're always complaining and they're always moaning and that drains your energy mm. it and you see that person like I'm going this way. They're coming this way. I'm going that way. <laughs> because you don't want them to drain your energy. Mm. Um, and I'm going to talk about how to change from that if you want to. It has to be your choice. You have to take responsibility for actually doing everything. Mm. It's not about blaming somebody else. And that's how it links to relationships as well. It's not about blaming somebody else. It's about you taking personal responsibility, not looking at it as you know, um, win or lose. It's about coming together. It's about being on the same page and being on the same level and being able to influence that other person. Um, it's quite funny because um, I'm thinking about somebody as, we, as, we, as we're talking and he changes how he speaks to me. I see how he speaks to other people, but he changes how he speaks to me mm -hmm. because he knows, for example, I don't swear. Okay. So don't be swearing at me. Come on now. Go swear at other people, but don't do it to me. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't. You can see his mind going, uh, he's about to say something and he's got to rethink how he's going to say something. I'm, I'm fine with that. Yeah, respect is the minimum. Exactly. That's how I see it. Exactly. I, I see that as a good thing. We don't, you know, I've, I have these conversations about swearing all the time. Um, and, I, and I just say, you know, it's unnecessary and it just shows the mm -hmm. level of intellect. Yes. I'm not saying it, you know, I'm not, I'm not snobbing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not. But what I'm saying is some of the time, and I get it when you, when you are expressing something mm. so passionately, passionately that yeah. you use it. And I get that. Mm. But it's when you're like every other, every word, other word and it's just yeah. like, just rolling. Yeah. Why? It has, it's lost its impact. Yeah. It's lost its impact. Yeah, and you look so, like a yeah. numpty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just have to say that some of the truth. through being mindful and non-judgmental, mm -hmm. it's about, okay, why does that person do that? Mm. Is it because that's all they know, how, they brought, how they've been brought up, how they, um, you know, how they've been, for want of a better word, educated? Mm. Um, because some, because I know that people haven't had the same experience as me. People haven't grown up with parents who don't swear, don't drink, mm -hmm. don't do drugs, you know, mm -hmm. and have lived healthy and, you know, encouraged myself and my brother to go to church every Sunday, you know, that type of thing. Um, and the it, good clean it's, living. it's just, it's just a, I wouldn't say <laughs> clean living necessarily, but, um, but yeah, all the good things. Um, but what I will say is it's, it's, Going back to my mindfulness now, how I interact with people mm. is very different. I'm very, um, how can I put it, very patient. Okay. I don't get as, as a youngster, I'll be in your face yeah. now. Mm -mm. You can say what you want to say. Mm. It's like the other day when I was working. I said, oh, these children, and I just let them run. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, 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 no. My mindfulness has helped me to be patient, to be non judgmental. They're expressing their opinion, mm -hmm. they're expressing how they're feeling right right now. Mm -hmm. um, and let them talk. Let them talk. And if they want to ask me a question after that, I will answer the question <laughs> okay. in a very calm way. Mm -hmm. And funny enough, the day when that happened, I was actually training somebody else. Mm. And she told me, she said, How did you stay so calm? Mm. And I said, because A, I practice mindfulness, but B, me retaliating mm. would only have raised everybody's yeah, raised the level, wouldn't raised it? The le mm. Raised the level. He didn't trigger me because 
I practice my mindfulness and I know that it's just like being non-judgmental, being patient, mm. being calm. That's what it's all about. So I actually practice what I preach, yeah. if that makes sense. Well, that's what you're supposed to. Yeah, well, exactly, exactly, exactly. Ah. So it's not only about being present in the moment. And yeah. I was present in the moment because everyone else wasn't there mm. when he was having the conversation with me. I was just with him. Right. Um, but it's, it's just learning how to be present in the moment and how to just don't judge, be patient, mm -hmm. stay calm. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, then you'll be surprised how that then impacts your life, your relationships, your interactions with other people. So it's that process to stay yes. calm. Yeah. Non-judgment. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. So Kieran's saying, ha ha, thank you. I'm based in Swansea and West Wales oh. uh, with body scanning and somatic yeah. tasks. Yeah. Is there things us counsellors and psychotherapists should be aware of in terms of the possibility of re-traumatising clients by assessing trauma-related emotions? Sorry for all the questions. That's I'm okay. finding this very interesting. Thank no. you. So what did we say at the top of the show? There is no panel tonight. No. You guys are the, the panel. panel. Yeah. So therefore, Ask your, your, questions. your questions keep them coming. Yeah. We are really, uh, we, we welcome your yeah. questions for tonight sure. for sure. sure. Absolutely. Definitely, so thank definitely. you, Kieran, for sharing and asking these questions because they are very, well, Kieran always asks. Very I know. Good I always, I, he yeah. always does. He always, always does. asks good um, questions. What I would say um, to you, Kieran, um, if that's what you do, um i wouldn't i wouldn't say to them you're using it as a way to help i would say have you tried um what do you think of and ask a lot of open questions and maybe get them to and i'll share the share the um the app that i use it's called calm so if you look it up on google you'll, you'll find it and just get them to do that because for some people so my trauma I kept hidden and I kept hidden for six years. So it wasn't a good thing to do and it didn't help me. Now that I've been able to share my trauma, because we all worry about, oh, it's going to do this, it's going to do that, it's going to do the other. Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. A lot of it, and I'm just talking generally here, a lot of it is people's fear of how they will be judged. It's their fear of mm -hmm. actually speaking their truth. It's their fear of what if, mm. because what and if, two words separately, are great. Mm -hmm. Put the two of them together and they're powerful. Yeah, Everybody's absolutely. like, oh, what if, what if? And we look at it, always look to the negative. negative always, always. Do you know why we look to the negative? Because our brain is designed to protect us. Mm -hmm. That's why. So hence the reason why, if you get to practice mindfulness, you turn that on its head. Mm. And so therefore what you're doing is you're saying, no brain, think this way, please. Don't think that way. I know you're trying to protect me, but guess what? No. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes with practice. As I said, you know, it's no different to if you want to, and I'll talk from the point of view of exercise. If you want to get better, if you want to get fitter, you want to get stronger. You have to practice. Mm. You have to be present you have to go and actually take action toward in order to make the habit and you go through a little bit of pain you go through a little bit of anxiety you go through because the amount of women and men women from the point of view of their size and you know they're conscious of everybody watching them and nobody's watching you if you're exercising nobody's trust me nobody's watching you um Maybe the men. And men coming into a class with a lot of females, mm. they find that a little intimidating. But at the end of the day, what is your goal? What is it that you want to achieve? And it's not about worrying about everybody else. And what you'll notice with all of my classes, if you ever get an opportunity to come, is that everybody in my class are not your typical model shape. But they come every single week without fail they enjoy it and they exercise and they come because i always say to them by the time you finish you'll go because i do it in the evening so by the time you finish you'll have a good night's sleep and then you can wake up in the morning and feel refreshed and everything mm. else mm. for it 
but I don't have skinny people in my class. Well, I have, and I encourage, there are some women even there who've had um, gastric band, pie, bypass, and all the other okay. bits and pieces. Mm. I've got women in my class who have lost so much weight. You know, it's got to the stage where it's just skin now. Right, oh, wow. Um, mm. But they'll still come to my class. I had one lady who came to my class, and she actually had, she was confident enough now to have a new swimming costume. She wasn't wearing black anymore. She had oh, one that had colour in. Lovely. And it was amazing. Mm. And I, I, when I teach, I kind of, how can I put it? I do it in such a way that everyone forgets what their challenges are mm. and they just have fun exercises. And do you use mindfulness techniques when you are doing exercises? I do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's mindfulness movement, mm -hmm. but and I'm um, not correcting people, but I, the way in which I teach, I make sure that it's you're focusing on yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about anybody else. You're focusing oh, on yourself. Yeah, you know. And the instructions I give out at the beginning is very much along the lines of do your thing. Mm -hmm. Forget about everyone else. Do your do thing. Do your thing. I like that. And if you can have a conversation, you're too close to the person next to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You know, that kind of thing. So we have a laugh. Yeah. And so therefore, they are relaxing. Mm. They are de-stressing. Turn me off. Fantastic. So guys, in case you're just joining us, I'm talking to Astrid, Coach Astrid, yes. who is a mindfulness and meditation expert. Yeah. And we have been talking, uh, well, if you want to know what we've been talking about, Press rewind. Yes, exactly. <laughs> replay, we have to be, replay. Because we are staying, it's mindfulness, we are staying mm -hmm. in the moment. In the moment, yes. Yeah, we're staying yes. in the moment. I like yes. Staying in the moment. In the moment, yes. yes. So so you link the mindfulness mm -hmm. to with the meditation. Yes. So how does, for, in case there's people who have never come across it, mm -hmm. how does that kind of work when you bring the two together? together? With the mindfulness, it's it's about the stillness. Mm -hmm. With the meditation, it's it's about thinking, stopping the stillness now and thinking about you. Okay. So the mindfulness is 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 about just calming yourself down and slowing yourself down. Mm -hmm. And then the, it sounds really weird because if you were to look up the definition of the two, they're almost they almost are opposites. Okay. They're almost opposites. But when you put the two together, mm. it works really well. Right. So you've got the clearing of the mind. Yes. You've got then the leading of the meditation. Because mm -hmm. normally meditation is led by somebody else right. to help yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So you've got the the, 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 the the it being led. And so therefore you're able to forget about everything else. Just be led to think about you. And here's where, when I was doing the um, mindfulness in the mornings mm. during um, lockdown, I would talk about the chakras because mm. that made sense to everybody. Yeah. So I would talk about, you know, the crown of the head. I would talk about what we think of third eye. Mm. I would the voice. Yeah. The heart. Yeah. Um, the solar plexus. Yeah. The root. And you know, it was it was about just going through all of that and understanding where how everything connects mm. and then being grounded by having your feet flat on the floor and you know when when i was over in um bali when we did it we did it on the grass yeah so we're really grounded with the earth I'm just, and that feels amazing it does i do it in my i actually do it at home okay so when everything is like yeah. especially in those moments yeah i go outside of my back garden yeah and i stand on the grass yes and it's just like Barefoot, Barefoot on, the grass, on the grass, just and grounding. That's one of the tips I would say. The minute you're feeling maybe anxiety, stress, mm. whatever, if you're at home, go outside into your back garden. Yeah. Or even, you know, if you have a balcony or whatever, but just take your shoes off. Yeah. And just stand, close your eyes, and breathe. Mm. And breathe slowly. Breathe slowly. So you breathe in for a count of four and breathe out for a count of four. Mm. Not one, two, three, four either. No. It's like. So it's just. Get it? Calm breathing. Do you get that? Calm breathing. Calm so breathing. yeah. Yeah. Calm great breathing. stuff. 
can't breathe. Okay. And if any of you guys do yoga, that does help you. <laughs> I'm not a yoga bunny, I'm afraid. I'm mindfulness because yoga, no, nah, I'm, I'm still too active. Really? <laughs> but, um, you know, and that's why I teach the kind of classes I teach. But through doing the mindfulness, it helps me to bring that into what I'm doing right. as well. And it's helped me make a big change. In my life. Brilliant. It's made me be a lot more patient. It's helped with my confidence. Mm. It's like, yeah, I'm a confident person, but there are times where I feel like, you sure? <laughs> we all have it. We all have those moments. We really, really. I forget what you call it. Um, uh, when you don't, you don't believe you're you're um, qualified, or can't remember what the word is now. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Imposter syndrome. That's it. Uh, yeah, it's imposter syndrome. Because I was, I was saying that to, uh, uh, I was, it was on my live mm. this morning. Um, so I'm not reading my phone. I'm looking for the question because I did. I'm thinking, what question? It's not even for Astrid. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a question that I have on my phone to remind me mm -hmm. um, because we have a competition. We have a free ticket to give away, and we didn't give a free ticket away last week. But on on the show, but we've had one, two, three, one, two, three competition winners so far. So sometimes I put things out on social media. Mm -hmm. If you see it, you see. It. If you don't, mm -hmm. you don't. Uh, you sometimes change the notification so you see it. Ah, that, uh, that's it. And sometimes if you are part of the mailing group, mm -hmm. I send out emails and mm -hmm. I say what I'm doing, blah blah mm -hmm. blah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's there. So this week we're going to do it here on the show as Astrid is here, and the question is, let's put on my glasses. Okay. I had mine on to drive. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't need them to drive, I only need them to read like oh, this, wow. yeah. Oh, no, I need mine to drive, because this, like, everything's blurred. Oh, no. All right, so here we go. Now, this is for a free ticket to the R Retreat on the 30th of October. Who was my first studio guest and what was the name of the show? Ooh, I'll read that again. Who was my first studio guest and what was the name of the show? So there you go. Not such an easy one. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have been on this journey of the After Dark Talk for a little while. Yeah. For a little while so you would have been with me during the pandemic that's the only clue that i can give you really mm -hmm. so you would know that we need you need to go back and have a look mm -hmm. and whilst you're going back and having a look like and subscribe please thank you <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe now on the bottom of the screen you can see the website with the address if you want to book um the r retreat uh, the details are on the bottom of the screen. It's www.yvonnemichelle.com forward slash the R Retreat Info. That is what you would have to put on there. If you go to yvonnemichelle.com, you go up to the hyperlink, you'll see the retreat. They click the link mm -hmm. and then all the details are there for you. Yes. So also, I, I do have to say, I am doing a, a, a little 20, what a little thing. I'm doing a 21 day uh, to loving yourself mm. on the 7th of November. So if you are interested in that, DM me because I am doing that. Um, that's going to be amazing as well. Mm. You know, and that's all of, it's all mirrors. Yay. Oh, it's, yes. oh, anyway, I'm really excited about doing that because it's the end of the year. We're coming up mm -hmm. to the end of the year. Yeah. You know, you always get people, you're making New Year's resolutions, you're doing this, you're doing this. I don't make New Year's resolutions. No. I don't. No. Because why are you making a New Year's resolution? You can do it anytime. Right. This is about planning. This is if you mm -hmm. if you fail to plan, you plan to, to fail. fail. Exactly so this is about right. planning. This is about us taking responsibility yes. of our yes. own self, of our life, and saying, right, what do we want? Mm -hmm. What do we want? We can make it happen. Absolutely. But we have to believe. That we can make yeah, it happen absolutely because there are so many people i know who started from nothing and if you see what they've achieved now yeah. it's amazing yeah absolutely amazing 
Yeah. And it's you out know? there for everybody. Exactly. You can do it. Exactly. You can do it. it. Is. You really, it is really possible. can. It is possible. So we're going to, we're coming up now. I know because we're coming up to the top of the hour. We will be coming up. And we're going to have our, our next experts coming in to the room and talking with us. Um, but before they do, um, I am going to um, just say to you, Astrid, is that if there was one piece of advice mm -hmm. that you could give our listeners mm -hmm. in regards to mindfulness and meditation, what would that be? One piece of advice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would say that... A lot of people are fearful of change. Yeah. And they don't like change. However, you can't be doing the same thing time and time again and be expecting different results. Mm. So mindfulness can actually help you make that change. It can help you make that change. Um, and it, it has done for me, and if you had known me back then and mm -hmm. know me now, I'm a different person, completely different person. Wow. I would recommend it to any and everybody. Okay. That's a say, I'll, I'll tell my story on Saturday. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to hear story. Astrid's story, you've got to I'll come to the retreat. Story. Exactly. And that's the 30th, so it's not this coming Saturday, not Saturday coming, but Saturday the following Saturday, Saturday the yes. 30th of October, uh, we are going to be at the Holiday Inn in Kensington High Street, London, and we are going to have an amazing time at the R Retreat. R is for relaxation, it's for restoration, it's for rebuilding, it's for reconsecrating, it's for any word that begins with R. <laughs> yeah. I like that part, <laughs> Yeah, I like the recuperate. Yeah, relaxation, it's, mm -hmm. it's all. And for those of you who are staying over, um, we have a small number of people that are going to be staying over on the Saturday. We will be going out in the evening. We will be connecting and talking with each other and building new relationships. I'm really, really excited. Even with the daytime, with all of the speakers, mm. you guys are amazing. You know, and this, and you come for the whole day, you get to mingle with the speakers, get to pick their brains, ask some questions. And then in the evening, we go out and we have a nice time relaxing. Just chilling and, chilling. and working. And yeah. yeah. Do you know what? I'd really love to go to a salsa do. I would. I really feel like I don't know if there is one. I, I don't know if there is, but I would really like to. Do... I'm sure someone will look it up, won't they? Yes, <laughs> somebody will look it up and say, "Oh, we're going." Uh, you wanted salsa, or you know, or I found somewhere. Yeah, uh, that's near to where we are, near to Kensington High Street, so we can go and dance. We can have a drink. We can, you know, mingle and and get to know each other. Yeah, that's just me wanting to shake my stuff, really. But if we don't get to do that, we will we will certainly we'll be find a way. Oh yes, we're doing something. It's gonna be very, we'll very good. So we are going to go to a commercial break. And then after the commercial break, uh, we're gonna have our next two guests come in to the studio and we're gonna have a talk again, and we're all gonna to talk together. Um, we're gonna have a talk um about well-being as well. So if you are interested in this conversation, stay with us and we'll be back right after this. Welcome to Yvonne Michelle's exclusive R Retreat, happening on Saturday the 30th of October 2021, located at the Holiday Inn Hotel, Kensington High Street, London. Now you may be single and you may want to meet the person of your dreams. You may even be in a relationship and want to add some spice, improve your communication skills within your partnership. Well, this retreat has been specifically designed to help you improve your relationship and personal development status and empower you to rebuild a healthy, more vibrant relationship with yourself and others. So with a choice of a one day package or an overnight stay, you will have full use of the hotel spa facilities and have an amazing experience. So book today, do not delay. Hey, and we're back. So thank you for being with us. 
and uh, I hope that you got the information for the R retreat. So I want to introduce our next load of guests who are online with us tonight. But I want to bring into the studio Michelle and Herbie. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> good evening. It's good to see you guys. Good to see now, um, Michelle and Herbie are in Wales, aren't you? That's right. Are you home? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in Wales. Yes, yes, Kieran's man, because Kieran is in he's in Swansea. Oh, okay. So oh, is that a different part of oh, Wales? It must be. Yeah. Okay, we're just thinking Wales is Wales, Wales. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's one place. <laughs> but it's not. Yes. Many places. So like, let me just give you a little bit of background about Michelle and Herbie. Michelle and Herbie have been our panel members from really day one, really, haven't you? Yeah. You've yeah. been on our on the After Dark show. So you were there from um from conception of the rant to the kind of meetup to then to coming onto Media Net, and now we are here and we're doing all of this weird and lovely. <laughs> I'm saying weird weird and lovely stuff. So I want to welcome you, especially because you have been with me and supported me all the way through this, mm. the pandemic and everything. Even Michelle has uh, made me some bread during the pandemic. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And brought yeah. it over, Ooh. you know, yeah, just to make sure that I was okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. So, I want to openly say thank you to both of you. Herbie has been a tower of support, but both of you have. Um, so I want to thank you for that during the pandemic. As you know, many people were alone and isolated. And these two people especially uh, have always made sure that I'm okay. okay. So I just really wanted yeah. to say that openly and to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I don't, don't cry, Herbie. Don't cry. It's okay. <laughs> So, you guys have uh, a come. You guys have, have been married for 37 years, is that right? 30, 35 years, 35, 35 years, but been together for nearly 40. Nearly 40. Whoa. Oh, we missed that. I don't think we could hear. Ne that, have you been together for 37? That's th nearly 40. Oh, your sound's gone. Years. Hold on. We're having a little bit of a technical issue in the studio. Let's have a look. Let's see how we're doing. Have a go. Can you? Let's see if we yeah. can hear you now. Yeah, we've been married for 35 years this year. And... We've been together since we were sort of 15, 15, 16. Wow. 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 So wow. you have been together a lifetime. Over 40 yeah. years. Yeah, yes. over 40 years. And that is, you, you said the right word, impressive. Mm -hmm. That is impressive. And so Michelle and Herbie are going to be uh, facilitating a workshop yes. at the retreat, how to keep love alive. Mm -hmm. And I think we could all, whether you're single, married, or even single-ish, I mm -hmm. think you can, you know, everybody can take something from this couple. Yes. And so I'm really excited about um, having them deliver this workshop. Um, but I want you guys to kind of tell tell us about what you are doing now. Because as I said, you're in, in Wales. I know you've recently moved and I know that you, you do a lot of well-being work um in that area so just give us you know just a brief synopsis of what you've been doing um and what you've been getting up to and how you're playing in the world oh lovely yeah well for me initially um you know um Yvonne that um I was commissioned to do some work and um in that commission we took some young people to Wales to a, a Jamie's farm yes in Wales, we have five farms around the country, and it's a farm where it's family therapy and farming. And we have the young people here for a week, a week's residential. The first time I came, I was like, no, this is not for me. 
too many animals and too many smells. If they had more legs than me, no legs, I was afraid of everything. Um, and then um, the second time I came with some young people, I was smitten. I bought my, my daughter bought me chickens that I had at home, started to grow my own. And the third time, my, third time I came to Wales was that I decided I need a job here. So two years later, I manifested it and I am now here as the, the therapy coordinator in Monmouthshire in Jamie, at Jamie's farm. Um, got a job um, and now I support the young people with like one-to-ones, talking to them, just checking in on them whilst they're here. Um, and I've been here for seven months. So we had sort of like a, um, like not a long distance Just relationship. Just a weekend, a weekend relationship. A weekend relationship. Mm, a weekend. <laughs> so I just see on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> just saw me at the weekends and I used to go yeah. home and, but I used to come up, he used to come up to here and um, he, Herbie decided that he was going to get a job local to where I am now. And he started last week, so we're now back together, living in our little flat that the farm has given us. Um, okay. So yeah, I'm living my best life. It's absolutely amazing here, absolutely amazing, so beautiful, and yeah, it's it's great, it's great, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the what she said. <laughs> yeah, more of what she said. Yeah, you know, we spoke about this um some years ago about going out to the country, living sort of the country life. Mm. Um, sometimes you have um you have a vision, vision, dream. You have a, a goal. Um, we have our own time on it, our own timeline on it. But sometimes it just you know the timeline we have is not what we you know it That's works good. out. Yeah expected we, we expected this probably another five six years but it's come a, come along earlier and you know it, it's good i mean i really enjoy that out here when you wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and you see countryside and trees and fresh air well kind of fresh you know but it's good it's see. fresh air well's fresh air it's well's fresh air it's really lovely and then being back to I'll say back to nature. Um, mm. I found it very kind of easy to adapt to the country life. It's like I, mm. it's, it's like it's something I could have done. You know, what I mean, you know, being living in, in London and being living in Luton in the city or the towns, you know, you, you just it's like on a treadmill. You know, what I mean, mm. you know, you're just going around doing your own thing. When you come out to the country, different lifestyle. Yeah. Everything's slower. Everything just feels better. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even just seeing animals walking around and chicken free raining and duck across your path and kind of stuff. Everything just seems nice. You know, um, I, I really enjoy it. You know, I get up in the morning and hear the cockerel. I crow. Wait, to, I'm going to cockerel up there to about, three, three. to about three. So out there <laughs> making up noise. The tree cockerel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's all good. It's all good. And mm. getting a puppy. So I'm getting a therapy dog. Therapy puppy. Oh. You talk about the dog. Yeah. You talk about Bailey. You can't talk about Bailey. I have to talk about oh. Bailey. <laughs> yeah, and he's coming. Uh, on Sunday. Yeah, he's ready. Yeah, you're picking him up on Sunday. Yeah. Yes, and he's, yeah. a, he's a lovely, lovely pooch. Not a pooch, is he? <laughs> he's a lovely dog. He is. He's lovely. He's so lovely. you've got you've got a therapy dog to help you in your work. So yeah. this is to, to help the children yeah. to open up, to integrate, to just just to relax. Because sometimes, you know, they're just caught up in, as Herbie was saying, the cycle. When they come to the farm, um, it's unconditional positive regard. So even when they're um they could be upset, could be effing and blinding, you know, we reframe it. So it's a positive, we really pick up on the positives. We walk, we go on lots of walks. Um, you know, 
it's just the approach and it's that calm approach and you know listening to what um your guest was saying earlier i was saying to um herbie that oh he said don't call him dad because i'm always <laughs> calling him dad <laughs> um you know i was saying but is that you know like the mindfulness is that also to do i feel that i'm mindful mm -hmm. but it's also to do with your personality and how i am and how herbie is does that also play a part in mindfulness being mindful about um, nature about creation about you know how I conduct myself um, to others and how I receive things from others or if I choose not to it's those sort of things I'm just I was just saying to Herbie you know just now before in the break you know is that part of being mindful as well as the mindfulness yes Yes, it is. It's it's very much it's very much a case of um, just having that calmness and that stillness. And sometimes things naturally happen mm -hmm. for you to be mindful. So the fact that you're you guys are out in the country now, and the fact that you know you, you you've got that countryside makes such a difference to being in in the towns and the cities. Yes. Um, and I know that when I, because I go down to Bicester, which is in Oxfordshire, and it's lovely. I'm looking out, all I can see is trees and hills and fields and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it just makes such a difference yeah. than being in the towns. Yeah. And yeah. It, it helps with, it does help with the, with the mindfulness. Definitely. So even though you may not have, you know, practiced mindfulness, or whatever, you're naturally doing it because of your environment. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also what I have found whilst I've been here, um, that I've taken up running. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Rochelle did the marathon the other day. She has wow. a half marathon. So wow. congratulations yes. and well done to you. Thank you. And, and that was, that was hard, but I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And um, until my knees sort of started to play up a little bit because I'm in the younger years, you know, and, um, <laughs> you are very young. What are you talking about? Well, you younger years, that's it. Maybe younger years. <laughs> that's right. So, um, you know, come mile nine, I was, I wasn't panting, wasn't sweating. I wasn't out of breath. I was just doing my thing and I yeah. continued to run and finish the race and that's determination. And that shows me that, you know, whatever, we can put our mind to we can achieve and it mm. is that positive mindset and you have the odd hiccup which was my knee on the way and that's life sometimes we have these odd hiccups but we persevere and continue i manifested that i wanted to work here 101 yeah. percent and here i am it's just like living a dream it really is and i got my best friend with me in it baby oh <laughs> You're my bestie. Oh, I just hope it's still like when Bailey comes. When Bailey comes, oh, mm. I'm still gonna be the bestie. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It's a, it's gonna... yeah, oh. Be my best friend, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So, what I want to ask you is, in terms of I'm laughing, I'm skin and teeth because I know, I uh, because I know you guys well as well. So, but my question to you is, is how do you because it's been such a big change for you mm. and as a as a as a couple who've been together all those years huge change you've manifested something you've made a decision i want to do this and it's manifested before the time in which you both thought it would how do you navigate a, say say friends if i was to say not that this is your situation but say i was to say that one of you was ready to go and the other one wasn't what would you, if there's a couple that are listening today that are in a similar situation to you where they've got this amazing opportunity to, mm -hmm. to move somewhere that's completely different to what they're used to, but one of them is ready to go and the other one's not, what, what would you say to them as a couple? What, would you, what advice would you give to them? Because we're all looking at you mm -hmm. like, damn, that's 37 years, man. 
that's like yes yeah 35 years together 40 odd years together mm -hmm. 35 years marriage we don't hear those figures mm -hmm. with people that look like us like mm -hmm. our age mm -hmm. they're normally a lot older you know mm -hmm. but you guys are young you're vibrant you know um you know and you're in your younger years of life also so what would you say to a couple that was experiencing something similar to yours but one's ready and the other one's not well um it's good you asked that question because um in a lot of relationships you you'll get a similar sort of scenario um whether it be a, a change of job or just anything in life and what we what we do what, well, what we always do we're constantly communicating we're constantly talking about what we want to do where we want to go um not everything that we've you know what we what we what we say we're going to do or want to do happens but we give different options you know because we you know again just tying up with it with a mindfulness um we sort of look at really what's out there yeah because sometimes what we want is not the best for us mm -hmm. or what what we would say the universe wants for us in that sort of sense so we kind of go along with you know with how things are the with the flow mm. so yeah. with that then we we learn to adapt um and that might not be easy because you're thinking well you know is this going to work you know what i mean this is new ground it's something different it's a change um but we know that the change or the adaption is going to be good it's working for us mm. so just for us to get into that place and work with it because we may not see we may we, we may not see the future you know what i mean we may not see what's going to come ahead and a lot of times we're going along and we're thinking we don't we don't really know what's around the corner mm. but what we do know around the corner is good yeah mm. it, it's good for us so let us continue on mm. yeah because sometimes if you see it around the corner, you may not want to go around it. And we're not saying around the corner is always negative. is always negative. Mm -hmm. um, it may it may not be desirable. It may not be something that we wanted, but it was something that we'll get get through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll get over it. It might be a hill. So you look on the corner, you see a big hill. You're thinking, Lord, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but we know that the hill's there, and we got the, the tools and the provisions everything to get over it so mm -hmm. let's just get over it it's yeah. there and we need to get over it and i think i think adding to that is that the communication is open communication because herbie must have thought when i said you know i'm gonna go for a job on the farm and he was like on the farm michelle i said yeah he said which farm yeah because we know so, <laughs> Even the bird outside is frightened of. I know, but you know what? It's all good. <laughs> I'm no longer frightened of birds. I mean, yeah. I mean you, you really need to that. see just Michelle's, uh, I'll say, call it testimony of the farm. Um, I, 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 so I come down weekends, and every time I come down, Michelle doing something different. If she's not mm -hmm. milking cow, she's <laughs> shearing sheep. She doing. I'm sort of like, what's you know? I mean, this is a different woman. <laughs> You know? well, that even different. not different, well, you know. but different. <laughs> even um, even going back to the to the to the running and, and the marathon, you know, Michelle <laughs> came and said to me, um, "Hey, I'm gonna do this half marathon." So I'm looking at Michelle, thinking that's like a thirteen and a bit miles. Mm -hmm. Michelle's saying yes, but I know Michelle can't really run. She doesn't run. No. Well, she run I like I don't run. Run like that. I don't run. Michelle, don't run. Michelle, like, Michelle, no. Michelle doesn't run. I'm not running. No. I would run, but Michelle wouldn't run. So mm. I said, okay. I said, okay. I don't want to discourage her. <laughs> I said, okay. So she used to go for walks. We used to walk. Mm -hmm. So I, went, I know she can walk. So mm -hmm. if she said to me she's going to do a walking marathon, I'd have said, all right. You're good with that. Mm -hmm. But when you tell me you're going to run a marathon, I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> let me, you know. So we went for a little run one day. Well, Michelle went for a little run. I was, right, Dad. I was walking and Michelle was running. <laughs> so I could see the kind of pace that she was going. 
to the to the extent that I was, I was actually folding my hand and walking. Crossing his arms and walking and I'm running. Yeah. And, wow. and I'm looking at Michelle thinking, hmm. I say, no, my friend, listen to me. You can't be crossing your arm. Look like you're enjoying it. Run alongside me a little piece so that I can feel that, you know, you're there and you're, you're with me, my friend. But yes, no. I run with Michelle, yeah. A few weeks later. No, 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 the same sort of time there, yeah. And my and my ankle and my knees, everything was hurting me because I was kind of just running on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> Why? You make yourself so bad. <laughs> 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 Because she said, she was running like I was kind of running. <laughs> but it, it wasn't really doing much for me because all I was doing is kind of like a, <laughs> like a, like a stepping thing, like a, like a step class thing, you know what I mean? And, um, oh my gosh. But, you know something? The weeks pass and the months pass and Michelle started to run. Mm -hmm. I got Michelle and I feel, I feel run. <laughs> I feel run for keep up with Michelle. Yeah, run good, right. Michelle. Run good. That's right. And we do, and, and, and constantly he was was out there. We're knocking out four miles, six miles, no problem. Then yeah. we go outside, knock out six miles, and come back in, come back home, and it was nothing. Yeah. Mm. And I thought myself yeah. like, wow. Mm. I still look on that though. Yeah. Look at that. Huh? <laughs> Listen. Two men, you know. I don't put nothing past the woman, you know. If she, <laughs> if she says she's gonna do something right, she's gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And she, let me give you an insight to that, yeah. Michelle is a Michelle out of the relationship. Michelle's more the visionary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michelle. Um, not saying that I don't really have a vision, but mm -hmm. Michelle have vision. Yeah. Um, just a little bit, just a look at something, yeah. Michelle um, did a, a, a master's degree um, some years back um, in a sort of like in a... My 40s. In, your 40, in her 40s, yeah? Now, before Michelle even did this degree, yeah, Michelle had a vision board on the wall with a lady, yeah, mm -hmm. with a... With Dressed, a, yeah. With a dress a hat gown. on, a gown, everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Michelle's, Michelle's saying, that's, 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 that's her. You know mm -hmm. I mean? And I thought, okay. Remember, but Michelle's dyslexic. And Michelle, let's go with not much education. At the old level in cookery. In cookery, all right. She had an old level in cookery. Yeah. That's, that's where the bread comes, comes from, you see. Where bread comes from. Yeah, and Michelle can cook very, very well. <laughs> um, but academically, in terms of English and maths and stuff like that, Michelle, you know. And, and partly that was due to her um, dyslex, dyslexia. Yeah, why well, she wasn't mm -hmm. able to study very well. But Michelle persevered, yeah. Got kicked out of how many units? Three? What? Three universities. No, two. Michelle never got kicked out. Two and two. Got kicked out of two. Well, not, not, not really kicked out. Well, they just failed because, yeah. because, because I wasn't academic enough. Right. Okay. And again, that was really down to a dyslexia because she wasn't, um, I would say, di diagnosed, really. Or well, didn't pick up the, di the um, dyslexia at all. It's part of one of her studying, yeah. one of the universities. Mm. One of the lecturers sort of took her aside and, and said, like, it's not something's not right here, mm. you know, what I mean, in terms mm. of how you're writing and everything else. And when they got a check, they said, Boy, they don't know how they, how she even got through any education, through anything, because her dyslexia was bad. I mean, Michelle, she was back to front, this and that. <laughs> yeah, she, no, 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 it's serious because. We, it looked the right way to me. I, I, I even had, um, I won't say, won't say arguments with Michelle, but Michelle, I had to write down things or say things, and I can't understand how Michelle can't see it. I'm saying, Michelle, it's X, Y, Z, and Michelle's saying that she, she don't understand. I said, don't understand, Michelle, it's X, Y, Z. And uh -huh. sometimes Michelle should be crying because she just couldn't get it right. And I thought myself, uh -huh. like, and I thought, hold on a second, because she didn't, it doesn't, with dyslexia, it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really appear. It's not, it's not like you're... You live with it. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's all like, like, oh, it's evident. It's evident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that you have it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's, 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 how you think and see things is how you see right. it. And yeah. you think it's right. And, and you can't identify it until it's identified that's to that's you. That's right, yeah. Basically. That's yeah. right. 
So once she once she once she's late, once they helped her and they got her a laptop and changed the screen color and all kind of stuff and everything else. But then they still did tell me to leave. All right, Michelle. Rude. Yes. Because you have to catch up. Yeah, it is. Catch up. Look at if you watch the dynamic yeah. between these two. If you guys, those of you who are watching at home, if you look at the dynamics between these two, it's very, very clear. You'll see lots of things between them. You'll see the energy just shifting. It's almost like a game of tennis, but like a not not like a Serena Williams final. It's like a, I'm just chilled and we're just, just we're like just, practicing yeah, we're practicing and we're yeah. just biding the time. The yeah. way in which you two interact is amazing. And so we're going to see um, more of this um, at the retreat and how you you really pull together. Because as you say, Herbie, you was running, you was walking while Michelle was running. And where I where I see the significance here for you as a couple is as a man, you know, you openly said that Michelle is more of the visionary, whereas there are lots of couples where the man may feel that he should be mm. but it doesn't necessarily have to be that way it's about you two working together and in enhancing your skills together you've talked about Michelle doing a university work and you've been there and they've changed the laptop you work with that process all the way through which requires patience it yeah. requires love to the highest degree, you know, and unconditional, uh, unconditional yeah. and acceptance of each other. Mm -hmm. And 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 this is what is very clear. I'm just looking at you and I'm laughing. It's very clear to me watching the dynamics yeah. between you. And not every couple has, has that. that. Yeah. yeah. I think I think also is that you know it's it's give and take. It is give and take and it is compromise. You know, if I could, if I can um, sort of suggest something to Herbie and he thinks about it and we have a discussion about it. And sometimes, I mean, we talk like all the time, you know, it's, it's, it's constant. First thing in the morning, um, during the day. And it's not, it's not a task. It's just catching up. How are you babes? Are you all right? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm just going for lunch. See you later. And it could just be that, you know, and then of an evening, um, even if even if we have um, a disagreement, because we don't argue because that's long. I'm not into that. Just not doing it. Michelle, I'm Michelle, like I'm that. Not mm, I like that. Michelle, yeah. I'm not arguing me. I'm not. I might as well just forget it. Arguing myself. Can Michelle and I argue with myself? Because yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not taking that on because it's not adding any value to my life. So why am I going there? I will yeah. get my point across, but across, but I'm not arguing. So even if we have an, an upset or Herbie's upset or whatever it may be, we always kiss and say goodnight or always kiss or, you know, there's little things that I do that I will share at the our retreat. At the retreat, um, yes. You know, and Herbie, you can't resist it. No. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 but it's those little things you know that and it's done from love it's it's coming from a good place mm. you know and even i could be vexed little more but at the end of the day it's only for a moment you know I'm, i don't prolong things because life is what it is i'm not going to say life is too short because life is what it is yeah. and i want the best for myself i want the best for herbie and i want the best for others so what you see with us is what you get 100%. Hold hands. I could be vexed, look more. My mom could be push up and we're going out. We hold hands all the time. You know, it's those, that sort of thing. And, and it's, 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 it's deep. And sometimes I think I'm a bit, um, it, I, I become a bit fearful because of the deepness of the love that I feel for Herbie. I talk to strangers about Herbie at the bus stop in the shop, you know, because he is absolutely amazing. Absolutely mm. amazing. Couldn't ask for anyone better than this man right here. Anyway. Oh, that's so lovely. So lovely. Nelson Katosha says, love you both. Inspiring power couple. Oh, and you are you. very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And we want to learn. We want to grow. 
and 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 develop and learn from you know because you know with with older the more mature people in of our ilk and are, are maybe on a different older generation don't generally talk about how they manage their relationship so we just see it from the outside looking in and we can just gather our own perception but the beauty of having you guys and the beauty of having you guys on the show um, consistently week after week um, shows for me personally, for me, it's like this is something to aspire mm, to um, and how you interact, how I see you interact with Herbie, Michelle, especially, if, as, you know, we hear a lot about the alpha female. We hear a lot yeah. about uh, new age women and all of these kinds of things. But how I see you behave and how graceful you are as a woman and how Herbie responds. And I just like that part where she said, you know, even if you're vexed, so there's certain things that you can do that, you know, Herbie just loves and if, you know, he's just there. Exactly. <laughs> he's not turning away yeah. from it. And this is something that I think we as, I mean, personally, even for myself, as somebody that does operate in male energy mm -hmm. quite a bit because of what I do, mm -hmm. um, but it's it's good for us to learn mm -hmm. from you because ultimately everybody wants to be in a relationship. Everybody wants to be loved, feel loved, feel appreciated, but not everybody can articulate that mm -hmm. in their relationship mm -hmm. yeah. and end up battering or as, as um, uh, my friend... Um, Dave Chappelle says, punching down mm -hmm. on the other partner. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. And then, then we end up with no relationship at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's loads of comments coming. Well done, Michelle and Herbie. Looking forward to seeing you guys at the R retreat. That's KB there. Sheena Campbell saying, yes, it don't matter if I'm vexed. We still hold hands. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, Grace comes so beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And it's about having that level of consciousness that you're both on the same level, you're both confident enough, mm -hmm. self-confident enough, mm. that it doesn't matter in yeah. that from the point of view of how you interact, it doesn't matter whether someone's upset or they're not or whatever. You still know how to relate to each other, each which other. is important. Yeah. And absolutely. it's it's not it's not a case of you know, just because you've been together that length of time. People have been together that length of time, but they're not like you guys. No, they can't stand each you know? other. They they can't. They're being they'll be in two separate parts of the house and all this kind of malarkey. But mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, you're you're demonstrating that it is possible it is. to be um confident enough in yourself and loving from such a deep place mm. that you can accept the other person for who they are and when you can learn to do that that's the relationship you guys have yeah yeah definitely. That's, that's right yeah there's um we were saying we um we do a, we do a lot of things together mm. um i find that 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 helps mm -hmm. our relationship um although michelle's you know michelle's my wife you know She's also, I've allowed Michelle in the nation. I do like, allow, I do like, I knew you were going to do that. I I was just waiting for it. I allow. Um, <laughs> well, I give, I give, yeah, right. I give, I give, give some, but yeah. I give Michelle a, a space, yeah, to, as a woman, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she, she's a woman, she's a female. So, um, I'm not saying she's not independent because obviously, you know, we're together, but I let her do a woman thing. Because some, some men, um, they're in a relationship and the, the woman, I, I, I don't know, the woman's like they're, I, 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 oh, can I, what's the word can I find? They're, they're not, they're not like a, a partner, you know what I mean? It's like the woman's there as a, well, a commodity. I, I don't even know. Just, just an attachment, just, a commodity. Just, just yeah. provide food and and mm, you know what I mean. Right. As a, you know I mean. They don't. Yeah. They don't. They don't let allow allow them to to, to be themselves. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean. Mm. And you know. And and if a woman wants to to um like for example, if Michelle wants to, Michelle wants to study. You know. So I'm happy for Michelle to study. 
Michelle, you know, whatever Michelle wants to do, um, if it's not, and if it's got a, um, got to affect the relationship, um, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, in my opinion, then, then you do it. And I mean, I've, I've had Michelle go abroad, you know what I mean? You know, to, to West Indies to go and teach and train, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. I know for some, it will be an issue. It's like, you could, 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 could I had comments made to me. Hold a minute, mm -hmm. I make your wife go clear West Indies, go train. I said, like, right. what's the problem? Mm -hmm. you know I mean? exactly. that, that's, that's Michelle, that's what she does. Mm -hmm. See, the thing as well, um, because we got married quite young, yeah, we grew, we, 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 I mean, we, I was 12. Sure was 12. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've, 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 grown, we've, we've grown quite a strong friendship, yeah, you know, yeah. in our relationship, yeah. yeah, and in all that as well, we've become we've become kind of secure in who we are, yeah, as, mm -hmm. as, as a couple, yeah, yeah. so yeah, see that, um. Right. Michelle will be out and, you know, I've had it over the years, you know, where, you know, there's a, you know, maybe a, a, a gentleman want to chat to Michelle and talk to Michelle and everything else. And people come to me and say, oh, oh, there's a man chatting to, 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 to your wife. And I'm saying like, it's okay, okay. Michelle, yeah. Michelle can handle herself. Yeah, yeah exactly. If Michelle can handle herself, she'll come and talk to me. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Look, this man, I've, um, I did one. I did once, yeah. And what mm -hmm. I have to do, I, I, I leave a little bit, but if I see that things are getting a bit too much, mm -hmm. yeah, then I'll go and talk to the man. Mm -hmm. I wanted to headbutt this man. Yeah, hold on a second, hold on a second. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I, my intention is not to go and fight the man. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight, no, you know he's, fight the man of my wife. You know what I mean? Yeah. But true. I need to show the man that, listen, you're disrespecting my wife and disrespect to me. Mm -hmm. And if you don't beat up yourself, then I'm gonna disrespect you. So mm -hmm. that's how I kind of go. But in terms of that, Michelle is um can handle herself. I can handle myself. But Michelle also knows that she got security. Yeah, mm -hmm. in terms of like if things get out of her depth, she can talk mm -hmm. to me and I will deal with it. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. no no nobody's well, those all who know right, me, all yeah. All right, all right. You can't be right. you can be big like um host. Like host. All right, all right. Like, like a <laughs> So when it comes to stuff like that, I just yeah. switch into a different person. But no, luckily, everything kind of normally when it, when I get, when they get a little talk, they kind of know to hold their place. Mm -hmm. But just to show in relationships, you know, sometimes that could be an issue. You know yeah. what I mean? With, with men and this and that, and men and some people yeah. try it mm -hmm. and they try it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you get off the holy ground and knows that you know something. Mm -hmm. I'm a relationship. You know what I mean? And and I'm not gonna, um, it's not gonna phase me in that sort of sense. Yeah. I hear you. Thanks for that, Herbie. I think, I think um, Sheena, Sheena Campbell's put a comment on mm -hmm. the uh, thread and she said it's all about trust. And I think that's absolutely correct. There's a trust mm -hmm. that you do have between, the, there's an, an almost like a, a secure kind of mm -hmm. lockdown thing where you just, everything just Secure, lock, 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 lock. I'm just secure. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So you can both be out and you can both be talking to people, mm -hmm. and you both know at the end of the day, you two have got each other. Yeah. And so if someone is talking and they they get a little bit leery, I, I suppose on both ends, if it was a woman who was you know overly friendly with Herbie, and he felt a bit odd because you know it's a female and he doesn't want to be overly uh, abrupt or anything or disrespectful yeah. he might yeah. say you know to michelle what have you not you know and michelle with her graceful self will just go up and say hello darling or whatever she does <laughs> but you it's that knowing that you have that trust and that respect for each other yeah. that i see couples out there that don't have the same mm -mm. couple and, and don't have that same kind of energy towards each other and i think we need to see more of this we need to hear more of this and learn more of this from couples like you hence one of the reasons why you are one of our um speakers one of our workshop um practitioners at the retreat because you have a long-standing wealth of knowledge and experience for like 40 years experience of having a relationship that's thriving yeah just not surviving it's, it's actually thriving, thriving. Yes. 
And so there's much that we can all learn. Um, Dorota says, so amazing to watch this beautiful balance, divine feminine and masculine energy in both of you, um, where, uh, where you let your each other shine in their full glory. I love that. Yeah. Really yeah. love that, what that was written. And it's very, very true that, you know, you can just see, you know, and, and I like the way in which you were talking about the mindfulness and and being a m mindful people mm -hmm. of you know of your environment of each other mm -hmm. of families friends loved ones you know you 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 just amplify that and i think mm -hmm. um as astrid was saying about the mindfulness i think you know it, it slows you down mm -hmm. and it kind of makes you think, think and, and there's yeah. no judgment no. and i think that that yeah. you are these people anyway it's part of your natural makeup, makeup and yeah. certainly I, I can see a, such a huge um shift in you guys since you have moved up to Wales as yeah. well yeah. so I think I, the air and being in the countryside has just sort of added to sleep. what we've yeah. got already mm -hmm. yeah it makes him want to sleep <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, Michelle but it's time, all relaxation, isn't it? Michelle, tell me it's the ear up here. I come inside this on evening time. That's my father sleep straight away. And Michelle, right? telling me it's the ear. It is the air. It, it is. Yes, it is. The air. It, it is, is the air. It's the air. It's quite yeah. nice and interesting to have the young people see us together as well. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we will go and up, if I'm working in the evening, Herbie will yeah. come over for dinner with the young people. So we all sit round the table together. You know, and you can see them sort of thinking, oh, this this is a black couple yeah. together, mm -hmm. laughing and joking and, and, you know, just being a part of what's happening. And, you know, we've had children ask us, oh, so is Herbie the father of all your children? You know, things like that. Because that's <laughs> yeah. not their journey. That's not yeah. their journey. That's not what they see. And what they see is like, is this real? And it yeah. is real because I hold Herbie's hand, you know, he might give me a kiss on the cheek or whatever, you know, and the children are like, what, you lot are so cute, you lot are so cute. You know, it's that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. we, we have to be ourselves. Yeah. We, yeah, we've got we to do. be ourselves. We can't be anybody else or anything yeah. else yeah. but ourselves. And we will definitely be ourselves at the R retreat. People buy your mm -hmm. tickets, come along and share and be a part of what's going to be an absolutely amazing event. Just come along, mm. see what nuggets you can pick up along the way. Because yeah. we're going to be there and I'll sure. be dropping some nuggets and Herbie will be dropping some nuggets too. You'd drop a nugget. Lovely. There was a question for you from Kieran. Um, uh, if we go back up a little About bit. Therapy. Little bit yes, I wanted to just quick, because you brought the therapy back up. Um, you said, I find the connection with the outdoors and with nature is such a vital element of positive well-being. Yeah. I work in Swansea comprehensive schools oh. and really feel the lack of engagement with the outdoors and staying indoors with technology and yeah. being constantly plugged into these devices yeah. um, is one of the big factors in poor mental well-being. Yeah. Are you seeing positive changes in the young people with this? I can't see therapeutic, therapeutic approach. 101% yes. Um, we on the farm, there is no sugar, no TV, no mo mobile phones, no sweets, things like that. It is working the farm because it's an actual working farm working and yeah. the walks that we do and also challenging the young people, um, walking up mountains, working together and we see changes. Sometimes they push and push to get what they've always got. But outside of that, the unconditional positive regard really does turn them around because we've, we go back in six weeks to check and to see how they are. And we go back in six months to check mm. and see how they are. And for the majority, there's been a shift in their behavior. 
So, you know, having no mobile phones and being away from social media for a period of time, even just yeah. for the week, they realize, well, actually, I don't need it. Really, I need to walk. I need to eat healthy. We have bowls of fruit on the table that they can help themselves to every yeah. time. They have breakfast, porridge and a cooked breakfast. They have a lunch. They have a snack. They have a dinner and they prepare and cook with our chef and with members of staff and they walk every single day. They get up at seven, feed the animals. So it's about working with the animals first before you feed yourself. They mm -hmm. feed each other and cook for each other and serve each other. It is an absolutely, absolutely wonderful um, ethos. And mm -hmm. please, Kieran, contact us. We have alternative provisions coming. We have children that are in care coming. We have, and with a couple of members of staff, you know, it's 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 amazing. Yvonne knows because Yvonne has come to the farm a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I've been there a few times. Oh, yeah. Okay. oh yes, yeah. with children yeah. and, and by myself. Yeah. With one, with my daughter, just for the weekend, we've gone up. Okay. To spend some time out in the country and oh, wow. you know, getting it get along with the animals and they, they were little. There were little sheep there making up a whole heap of noise oh, yeah, the no. last time <laughs> that I was there. <laughs> it was, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was lovely. Mm -hmm. But it's it is farming Monmouth. Yeah, it's beautiful, absolutely okay. beautiful. And the results that we saw, I mean, for me, my journey with young people mm -hmm. has kind of slowed down. I'm more mm -hmm. working with um, older and more mature people. But um, when I was working with young people um, on that level, the results that we got on the farm were amazing. Yeah. Um, so I want to connect um, you with Kieran, Michelle. Hundred mm percent. -hmm. Yeah, because I think I think that there's there's some synergy there, and I think you can kind of work mm -hmm. um, something out. As, and as Kieran is with schools in Swansea, I think it would be a good connection mm -hmm. for you. For sure. So Nathisa is saying yes, authentic. She says yes, I love it. Um, sorry, I'm late to the live, but what's the name of the farm? Is it Jamie's farm? Yes, Jamie. it is. Jamie's farm. In Monmouth. In Monmouth. Monmouth. It's the Monmouth branch. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So, guys, you know, we've been talking about all different things mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about mindfulness, uh, meditation, but also how, you know, a relation. I mean, even though it's just conversation, mm -hmm. we can pick up a lot mm -hmm. from what you've said in how you navigate your relationship and even that big move i think a lot of people in relationships can learn mm -hmm. from you saying right having this thought having this vision i'm going to work at this farm because mm -hmm. i actually remember that conversation i remember you saying that yeah. um and it's like okay you're gonna make that happen and i've i've witnessed mm -hmm. this manifestation yeah um and everything that Michelle has put out there has actually happened. Yeah. And so, you know, even if you want to know how to manifest, mm -hmm. right, you need to come to the retreat. Exactly. You need to come to the retreat. And as, as I, I'm saying this, I'm talking about this, it reminds me of a client, the lady that get, called me. Um, she's a property developer. And she told me, oh, I've been following. She said, I've been following you for about four or five years now. I said, really? She wow. said, oh, yeah. She goes, because she goes, I'll always come on your page. She goes, because I want to see what you've manifested, because you're always manifesting stuff. I said, oh, okay. that's nice. She goes, yeah, and you have some nice looking men on your on your page. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> I said, okay, then. <laughs> all right, then. So where's all the good looking men gone? <laughs> I really know. There are. I know a lot. I, and I said to her, I do know a lot of Lost, nice looking yeah. Yeah. men, some yeah. nice, genuine men. Mm -hmm. yes so there's a bit of big art i do know them so yes so um the thesis is saying and i hope i'm pronouncing your name right awesome i've had very positive feedback from the young people i work with about the farm Yay. thank you okay. look at that yeah you see how small yes. the yeah. world is yeah because who would have known mm -hmm. exactly. who would have known exactly. so i'm hoping the thesis that you'll come to the r retreat meet Michelle and Herbie in person, mm -hmm. come on their workshop, learn some things for yourself, and also come and meet Astrid 
and learn about mindfulness and meditation. You know, you're going to learn about um, how to actually last week's show was so informative, had so much feedback in regards to staying stay, safe, safe yeah, online, so good, not yeah. just for the adults, but how yeah. the adults make, make their children, children safe. safe. Yeah. Um, so that was a really, really um, good show. So if you want to learn about these things, learn about how to build a relationship, a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. how to um, identify mm -hmm. the red flags, mm -hmm. high, you know, all of these things are going to be part of the retreat. So bring, I a, friend. bring, a, friend. bring, bring a friend. Bring a friend. That's yes. it. That's it. So Nathisa says it's phonetic. Natisha. 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 Okay. All right. Natisha. I can say it with an accent. Natisha. <laughs> Natisha. <laughs> yes, I can see it. Thank you for that. Yes, I'm hoping to attend the retreat. Absolutely. Yes, guys. So make sure the link is on the bottom of the page. It's running across. Make sure that you take the link. You've only got probably how many days are left now for the retreat? Oh about 13 yeah, maybe 13, just, no, yeah just over a week oh it's just no it could be about 10 oh yes yes because yes, on saturday, saturday, saturday oh, yes saturday seven, what we had wednesday thursday friday saturday seven eight nine ten eleven days eleven days eleven days i use my fingers to count weeks. yeah less than two weeks i use my fingers to count and in our business you still get the answer <laughs> i got the answer mm -hmm. yeah so we are looking forward to the retreat. Michelle and Herbie are going to be coming from Wales. They're going to be joining us in London. They're going to be flying over and landing on the helipad, you know, on Saturday <laughs> morning as they do, you know, coming all the way from Wales. Yeah, they're coming. Astrid is going to be there. I am going to be there. We are all going to be there. So um, I'm going to hand over to you. I'm going to give you guys just a few minutes just to say just a little bit um, about anything. If you want to give a tip, if you want to give a tool, or you just want to give a little bit of encouragement, you've got like a minute and a half each. What would you like to say to those listening, um, Michelle and Herbie? Communication is key and building trust, being open, and being your authentic you. Yes. <laughs> all of those, all of those, all of those. And um, just, just being sort of, just being, just being relaxed about things, you know, the, um, in life, life's, I always keep saying life's got twists and turns, you know, um, you, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in life. Um, so really just, just, make just, just make, now. yeah, just make it work for you now. Um, you know, make it work for you now. So live, 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 live today, you know. Today, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And again, I just want to thank you for your support for this on this show. You know, you've been around since the beginning and I do really love you guys and um, really appreciate the love and the support because what you guys don't see is what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And um, not so much now because Michelle and Herbie are in Wales, but um, certainly in the beginning and recent months, um, they have been very pivotal mm -hmm. and they have seen a lot of things in the background and have always been a support so mm -hmm. you know i think it would be remiss of me not to even mention that and i do want to thank you both from the depths of my heart oh, for your love you. and your support you know and i'm really looking forward to seeing you guys do your thing um now do i, I have to openly admit i've i've seen michelle um facilitate you guys are going to have an amazing time michelle is fun and so is herbie <laughs> they are a fun couple so be ready for laughter be ready for you know the relaxation be ready for happiness and some jokes because i think you are going to get more surprises than you can bargain for um with these two here so and tell, yeah, a, look friend. Forward. And tell, tell a friend, friend. Bring, a friend. bring a friend yes bring a friend yes and also astrid now what would you like to tell the people then? 
Um, I like to tell the people then that this is me. And at the end of the day, by putting everything you learn at the R retreat, including the mindfulness and including um, just going with the flow, it will make such a difference to your life. Yeah. Um, and we all, we say, live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. What's gone, you can't get back and you can't change. Mm. What's coming, you don't know if you're going to see tomorrow. Mm. So make today the present. Yes. Make it the gift mm. and make it work because tomorrow's not guaranteed. Yeah, it's not. Definitely. It's not, and we see that. We we can see that with with what's going on in life. I want to thank my guests for being in the studio today. I want to really, you know, and actually, I'm going to openly say thank you to Astrid for she's like for for for, what? For, what? <laughs> for, for the mindfulness mornings, the the mediation mm. mediation the meditation. meditation. <laughs> well, it felt like mediation between myself and my brain. It did. <laughs> But, so um, I want to thank you for doing that because yeah. the commitment that you showed, mm. you were there every day, every day, every day yeah. without fail yeah. on time. Yeah. Yeah. Every and day. every single day you were there giving, giving. Mm. So I want to just appreciate you thank for you. doing that because you know what? There's many people out there doing stuff mm. and they never know mm. how much impact that they have on someone's life. Mm. So I just want you to know that you've had an impact in my life, and I thank you for that. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. You. We have to talk the truth, and we've got to start bigging up our own people. Yes. And when you're doing a good thing, you must tell somebody. Don't wait till they pass. <laughs> and then yes. at the nine Why is it we always wait till people pass before know. we say anything? At the nine night, oh, yes, I remember them, and they did this, and then, oh, no, I'm telling you now while you're breathing and you're smiling and you're here, <laughs> and we're in the present yes. moment. Yes. And I would just also like to say that I'm inviting each and every one of you to join us at the R retreat. Um, you know, We've been doing this for the, this. This show has been running since the lockdown. Yeah. It's been yeah. running for. It's yeah. coming up for nearly two years yes, now. now. Yeah, yeah it's really right. you know right. give or take some months, um, and it hasn't always been easy. But you guys have always been here. And when I say you guys, I mean you guys, the audience, those of you who are on Facebook, those of you who are on YouTube, those of you who are on MediaNet Live TV. You are always here, week in, week out. And I just want to show uh, my gratitude to all of you. Um, <laughs> I just see a comment come up. Annie Max said, I started watching AD after April 2020 and may have been and have featured sex toys. <laughs> That's a nice way of... Um, <laughs> the meditation yeah, and the mindfulness you know. mm. <laughs> and grace campbell saying hey, 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 hey. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. okay okay so you see and even with the mindfulness you then become more comfortable with the sex toys too isn't it? yeah comfortable using it to yourself and mm. getting to know your own body listen i've got a question for you we've got the last three minutes and it's and annie mac is because of the, her question prompted me to remember well her statement and the question is and this is for a free day pass this is the 97 pound ticket who was my first studio guest and what was the title of that show yeah. now i'm going to leave that again i'm going to say it again who was my first audio or studio guest and what was the title of that show? That is this week's question. If you don't know the answer, go and do the research. Mm -hmm. And whoever DMs me first, first if you yeah. can't come on here tonight, if you haven't got the answer now tonight, you have the opportunity to d direct message me and you could be the winner. Right? Do you want me to read the question one more time? And it's not because I wanted to put my glasses on. The question is, who was my first studio guest and what was the title of that show? Right. And Annie Mack is saying, so am I close? 
you're close enough. You're close enough. But it, it's actually, it just prompted me. It just prompted me. So it's not close, and, but it's not far. Mm. <laughs> so this is the £97 ticket. If you know that answer, you could have a free pass on the 30th of October, October. right? So on that note, we have come to the end of the show. Next week, we have um, two psychotherapists coming in. Uh, one is a little bit different. One deals with chakras. and okay. she, Yeah, she's amazing. Um, Caroline Heward is coming in next week. She's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. And I say that because I had a telephone conversation with her, and it was just a conversation, and I mentioned something. And when I mentioned... Um, the thing that I mentioned, she just went, and you're this and this and this, and you you feel like this because of that, and you feel like that because of that, and you feel like this because of that, right? And I was just like, huh, what? So you're going to hear more next week. She's amazing, really, really good. And um, we also have Angie, um, it's Angela uh, Noel, Sterling Noel, Angela Sterling no. Mole, Noel oh, okay. coming in. And she is a psychotherapist for couples. So you're getting, mm -hmm. you're going to get some, listen, we've worked so hard on this retreat, so hard to get it right so that you get mm -hmm. everything that you need mm -hmm. um, in this one space. So do book your ticket, do support. Um, and do remember those of you do remember, I will be live tomorrow morning at nine. Yes, I'm running a live tomorrow. Um, it'll be the last one for the week. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll be back again next week. So nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning tomorrow and eight o'clock in the evening tomorrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm doing like a marathon thing. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so join me tomorrow, but for now, take care of yourselves, love on yourselves, be good to yourselves. And we will see you next week at the retreat. I'm sure we will, but if not, we will see you for next week's show. Yay. Thank you for coming Astrid, Michelle and Herbie. Thank you for being here and we will all see you next week. But for now, ciao, ciao. Bye. 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 You got me running, 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 you got